Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be reacting to three real life Yonder Horror Stories Volume 3 2 Chan Scary Stories. Ooh. Um, by Lazy Masquerade. I think I just said that, but he's a pretty famous. I, is he famous? I don't know. How many subscribers does this guy have? One million subscribers. So I guess technically by having one million subscribers, you automatically be considered famous or something like that. I, I don't know, but he is very, um, known for his scary stories and stuff. Specifically, I believe his Yonder <laughs> stories are his most popular ones because a lot of them have over. No, actually, never mind. Now that I'm looking at the video's suggestion, just disturbing two chan stories are his most popular ones. Video almost have almost one mil, which is crazy. <laughs> But I guess they're that good, probably because they're like 30 minutes long or something. <laughs> but I mean, that's what you get for like, um, for stealing somebody else's car. <laughs> ooh, did I say, ooh, I did not mean to say, ooh, hey, scandalous, you can't, come on, Jay, you can't start that drama and stuff. You can't destroy bridges between you and a potential collaborator. Nah, f*** it, I, I don't care. Um, so basically this guy, from what I've noticed, um, does not credit the original post or redditor who actually posted these stories on reddit. Um, if you look in the description of his Yandere stories videos, I ha like, personally, I've, I've never actually seen any of his videos, nor have I, like, looked through all of his descriptions, but from the one I'm looking at or the one I'm about to react to, um, he does not credit any of the Redditors or any of the people who actually made the stories, but instead have this person called Lady White Rabbit translate um, the stories from Japanese to English for him. And he pretty much just narrates that. And he technically he's taking stories from somebody else's without permission, in a sense. He also has the audacity to like, Oh hey, everyone, I have to send your story my way, here's my email. But then again, like, I did have people um, send me their stories saying, Hey, if you want to read my story on your on a video or something, go ahead. And yeah, you know, that's fine. But when you take somebody else's work on Reddit or something without their permission, I'm... I don't know how I feel about that. Like, like, cause I've read some of the forums on Reddit and a lot of these people are pretty pissed off because people take um, their stories without asking, especially a lot of the YouTubers on YouTube. They pretty much just look up Reddit and just, just take the stuff without asking and that. That's pretty scummy, especially if somebody like, they took a lot of time of their life just to, you know, write these stories for the, that subreddit's entertainment and you just come along and take it and without asking or crediting or even leaving a link which is like super simple dude you could just simply leave a link to the original japanese post if you if you can but you know what it what doesn't matter if you get millions views out of that uh i don't know that's just me ranting real quick but enough of that i'm just gonna react to like 10 minutes or the first story of this video i'm not gonna react to all of it because like 30 minutes come on like i i don't i don't really have that long of a ten, of a attention span to listen through all that but yeah here we go These stories were collected from the two channel and have been translated from Japanese into English. They all are claimed to be true. Yet, Number one. You know what? I'm never mind. I'm gonna. I'm Finding gonna be love quiet. in Japan can be tough oh, these days. Pretty loud. The media here says that more and more young people are suffering from Sekusu Shinai Shokogan. That pretty much translates into celibacy syndrome. Basically, no one's getting laid anymore. Half of all young people aren't in a relationship. You know what? That's pretty interesting is that um, it is true that in Japan, a lot of these services are very obscure where you can just hire a mom. You can hire a freaking girlfriend or a sister or brother or whatever to hang out with you for a whole day to do whatever you want. Um, just go to the arcade or something just to feel like you're comforted because a lot of these people in Japan, they're like, they're like lonely and stuff like Hitori Bochi. Or like loneliness. Welcome to loneliness. Which, if you guys know, it's from the NHK. Yeah. So just imagine that being in the U.S. or any of the Western countries. Like, if I open up my own cuddle, <laughs> bread cuddle. Actually, I think that's already a thing in California, but it's run by hippies or something like that. So that'd be pretty interesting. But imagine like a, you can rent a girlfriend or something. I'm just rambling at this point. And like the name suggests. 
cuddle you. Nintendo even makes virtual girlfriend games. <laughs> oh yeah, that's oh, true. The wonders of technology. And somebody actually married like their 3DS or either. whatever, which is I pretty the funny. Deal. A proper relationship. Yeah, so does like every mine. human on the planet. Well, told me about this speed dating night that was coming up. Said that he was going, and that I should sign up too. Well, it sounded like it could be a fun time, and what did I really have to lose? For those of you who don't know how a speed dating night works, here's a quick rundown. A bunch of single men and women turn up to the event. All the women go and sit at a table by themselves, and all of the men get told which one to sit with. Then, a three minute timer starts. In that time, you either have a nice chat, or you sit there in awkward silence. Hopefully not the latter. Once time's up, a bell rings, and you move on to the next girl's table. Once everybody's had a three-minute date with all of the other members of the opposite sex, you all mark down on a piece of paper who you'd be interested in seeing again. The whole speed dating thing, it's kind of funny because I've actually went to a PopCon convention or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I think they're trying to be a Comic-Con or something, but they actually had like a speed dating thing going on or a panel. No, it wasn't a panel. It was like an event kind of thing, which is kind of weird. But they pretty much did the same thing where they would have guys just sit in chairs and the girls would like choose what whichever and and like every 10 seconds they would just switch chairs and stuff until the whole thing was over and like the guy explained in, in the story um the you write on a piece of paper and that kind of stuff but a lot of the times like these speed dating things here in america are like basically res like exclusive to conventions or something because a lot of the nerds like myself uh, don't know how to get a girlfriend or something like that. I don't know. It's just kind of weird because if you guys ever seen that one series on YouTube where it's just Comic Con goers um, go on speed dates and stuff, it's like very cringe. But you know, it's the um, it's a very TLC good cringe, which makes it very interesting. Unfortunately for Goro, he was on the shorter and chubbier side. Imagine a Japanese Danny DeVito. <laughs> Bro, that would well suck, for. honestly. Oof. The speed dating gets underway. Your chances of getting a girlfriend with, with things are going great. Like looking like that is very it's low in Japan. The night, because a lot of Japanese people expect you to be like thin and like um was very a fit, the bubbly, young not like Tokyo muscular, girl, fit, but work. like fit, Omaka, just regular. This fit. hot, intelligent chick with a great body. Yumi, this more alternative girl with bleach blonde hair, pale skin, and a really cute smile. And then, I got to Kyoko. As I sat down, I thought there was something strangely familiar about her, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what it was. I sat there politely, until the three-minute timer released me from that purgatory. I stood up, said my nice-to-meet-yous, and moved on to the next table. Wait, three minutes? Bro, that's, that's did way too long, <laughs> holy crap. Distracted by I couldn't sit there for three minutes Kyoko with a stranger, that would be too awkward. Like this some blinking, penetrating stare. Once all of the dates were over, I met back up with Goro. Hey bro, did you recognize her? Huh? I didn't know hey what he bro, was talking about. Hey bro, did you about. recognize her? <laughs> that girl, Kyoko, <laughs> so from our high school. Man, I can't believe how much she's changed. Kyoko. I honestly couldn't place her in my head. The name rang a bell, sure, but Kyoko is common. And our school was pretty big. She must have really changed. I guess that's why I thought she seemed familiar, though. Huh, mystery solved. Goro continued. Yeah, man, she's really blossomed. She wasn't really into me, though. Pff, what a jib. So Kyoko knew me from school, huh? What a jib. <laughs> jib? What the heck is a jib? Is that a British thing, or... I or... What what what's a jib? I'm gonna ha need to look that up. I don't know. Maybe I had her on Facebook and had forgotten all about her. That could explain how she knew where I worked. That's gonna bother. But if that's the <laughs> case, why wouldn't she have mentioned knowing me from school? Ah oh, well, she wasn't really my thing anyway. I marked her down as a non-match on my card and forgot all about it. One evening, Goro called me up and asked Yumi and I on a double date sort of thing. Said that one of the girls from the speed dating night was interested in him after all, and had suggested going to see a movie at the cinema. Some corny rom-com. Well, I wanted to help a brother out, 
So I agreed. When we arrived, Goro was. Let me guess. Goro is with that y- Yumiko or whatever her face is. Coincidentally, I bet. I'm pretty. I, I'm bet. I bet. Standing there with. You guessed it. Ah, uh, knew it. Knew it. Or Kyoko. Hey bro, whatever. Check it out. <laughs> Our blast from the past, huh? Goro said, taking me to one side. Bet you never saw this one coming, huh? Me bagging a hot babe like this? I guess Goro thought. He- okay, who who in the right mind says that in front of the, your own date? Like, like if I had a girl, if I was like single and stuff, and had a girl next to me, and I and we were going on a double date, and was like, hey, dude, guess what? Look, I got a hot babe. <laughs> like, bruh, if I was that girl, I'd be pretty offended by that. Uh, I guess it'd be kind of a compliment too, but still, that's kind of degrading in a way. It surprised me with his date being Kyoko. Well, I was certainly surprised. Neither Yumi or I knew what to say. We kind of just stood there, awkwardly. It was clear that Kyoko had set this whole thing up and got Goro to ask me along with them. I guess little Goro took over the thinking for a while, and he just went along with the plans in hopes of getting laid. For the next week, Yumi kept telling me that she had seen Kyoko following her around town, glaring at her with hatred in her eyes. Honestly, I was worried that Yumi might leave me, simply because she was scared of Kyoko's obsession. I suppose that was Kyoko's plan. This whole thing came to a climax on one weekend night. Yumi and I had been out for a few drinks, and came back to my place to spend the night. Then, the sound of footsteps entered the dark bedroom. That was quick, I thought to myself, too tired to open my eyes. I waited for Yumi to hop into bed beside me. But she didn't. She just stood there, breathing heavily. (laughs) What are you doing, baby? I whispered tiredly. Then, breathing heavily. Okay. It's Kyogo. My muscles locked up. With a racing heart, I opened my eyes to see a silhouette at the foot of my bed. I couldn't make out many details. Are you awake? Yeah, no fucking shit I am. (laughs) What the hell are you playing at? How the hell did you get in here? The landlady let me in. I've been waiting for you to get back. Wait, usually these apartments are like very small. How the heck did she hide from them? I don't know, man. That's just weird. Uh, that could be one of the flaws in the story. I don't, I don't know, but I don't know. Did she kill Umi or whatever her name is? I could see Kyoko now, there in a thin nightgown, like she was ready for bed. What made my stomach churn though was the thing in her right hand. It was a knife. Of course. What the f- is this? Get the hell out before I call the cops. Kyoko continued to take unnecessarily deep breaths, like she was gasping for air or something. It's like she really thought we were in a relationship because of that three-minute date we had, and she thought I was cheating on her or something. This was a total shock to my system, and I was struggling to process what was actually happening. It was like I had woken up in a nightmare. Kyoko turned her back to me and stepped towards the door. This insane bitch was going for Yumi. There was no way in hell I was just going to sit back like a coward. <laughs> With I'm Kyoko's totally back to get me, demonetized I decided for all these to curse take words. my chances. <laughs> I leapt from my bed and charged, slamming the full weight of my body into her. She screamed, I guess not expecting me to attack her. I flew downwards onto Kyoko, the blade in her hand slicing a deep gash into my leg. But I didn't care. The adrenaline masked the pain, and hobbled next door to wait for the police. By the time they showed up, Kyoko had fled. It didn't take them long to track her down, though. She was hardly a master criminal after all. Just a delusional young woman. Before escaping, she had stolen one of my cones and some items of clothing from my wash basket. Little keepsakes, I suppose. Hmm. As it turns out, Kyoko had been obsessed with me since high school. An obsession that hadn't faltered over the years. Apparently, I'd caught her eye back then, 
and she had been stalking me on and off ever since. Neither Yumi or I could believe it. We did manage to get a restraining order, though, which seems to have convinced her to stay away from us. We haven't seen or heard from her for the past year. <laughs> Convince, because, you know, that always works. Recently, I checked on Kyoko's social media profiles. Looking through old pictures of her online, I remembered who she was from school. This quiet, mild-mannered girl. It's always the ones you never suspect. She's currently living in Tokyo, and seems to be just as deranged as she was back then. Good luck out there, guys. All right, that's pretty much for that video. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna listen to the rest of it. Uh, story-wise, the story is actually very good. Um, well, very good is is an overstatement. Um, it's okay, I guess, for what it is. You know, it's just somebody writing a story and stuff, and uh, it sounds like something that would happen. Um, I don't know to that extent. Maybe an over exaggeration, but it, everything's okay, I guess. Um, I, I'm sure he could probably get a voice, a, a real voice actor, to voice the women and the um, stories. But I guess he's asking one of his friends to do it for him. He probably should give her a better mic for sure, though. You know, I I still have the issue where he's pretty much just stealing the stories from Tu Chan or from somebody else, which I'm not okay with. Um, I don't know, like, it's kind of rubs me off the wrong way. Especially after getting so many views and stuff. It's just like, I don't know, man. But that's my reaction. I'm, I'm not very good with reacting to um, these kinds of stories. Just because it's like, I need to listen to it. And once I start listening to something, I'm like hyper-focused. Unless it's something like funny or something like that, I don't know. But yeah. If you guys like this video, please leave a comment and, you know, leave a link to uh, any other videos you want me to react to. Um, this is just a video that somebody else recommended me to react to on my channel, and so I did. Yeah, <laughs> there's really nothing for me to react to, honestly, because it's just a story. And a lot of these um, stories are from somebody else and not lazy masquerade stories, so... Which is kind of hard to react to because, you know, it's not his story, so I can't really critique him as a writer, but I can only critique the original people who made these stories on 2chan, which I have no idea who it is or where he got the stories from, so... Because, you know, he doesn't leave credit to the original posters, so whatever, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me know what you want to watch next. Um, let me know what you guys want me to react to next, um, as always. You know, have a great weekend, guys, and peace.